Hello, everyone. Matt Clark, research analyst for Money Markets here with your weekly Bull in the Bear podcast. If you haven't already, I do want to make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Uh, you're going to find a lot of great features there uh, with Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell, Greens on Fortunes coder Charles Sizemore, and myself each and every week. Uh, just make sure if you're not on YouTube already, go to youtube.com, search Money and Markets. You'll find our green Bull and Bear logo. Make sure you click that logo, hit subscribe, match that notification bell, get notified each and every time we release a new video. Now, on with today's podcast, today I'm going to show you how the 5G revolution is going to transform how we connect and use the internet, if you didn't already know that. And I'm also going to show you how you can profit from this use uh, of blazing fast 5G connectivity. Now, I recently upgraded my smartphone from an iPhone XR to my new iPhone, uh, iPhone 12. It's not new, but I mean, I don't really go for the brand new ones every time they come out. So I kind of wait a couple years, skip out, but I got a new iPhone 12. And one of the biggest differences that I found uh, after I upgraded was the ability to access 5G wireless networks. So anywhere that I'm at that has a 5G uh, network, I have instant access to it. And I went from spending hours downloading music or TV shows or movies to doing all that in just minutes. And anyone who's got a 5G accessible phone knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I can operate just as fast on my iPhone as I can here on my laptop computer, which uses my home Wi-Fi connection. Now, while scrolling through news on my uh, new super fast iPhone, uh, which is, isn't really new, uh, I came across a story uh, about a new use for 5G technology that's really going to blow up how we connect to the internet at work and at home. It'll make it, it'll make it uh, easier, faster, and cheaper for businesses and individuals to access the internet and take advantage of 5G speeds. Now. Most of us, you know, if you're at home and you're on and you have a Wi-Fi network, you're connecting to the internet using a, a cable-based access point. Um, basically, cable is run under the ground uh, to a business or subdivision of homes where then it's split. It's split out amongst the many different contact points. From there, the cable is routed to an individual home or an apartment or, or buildings where through a router, it can be used to access the internet. So it's kind of a long process and it involves using uh, a, a lot of cable, miles and miles of cable to run from one point to another. In fact, it costs cable companies or internet providers millions of dollars to lay all their fiber optic cable to reach houses, apartment complexes and businesses. Now, then you have DSL, which is otherwise known as digital subscriber line internet service. And it requires you to have a phone line to transmit an internet signal. This isn't used as much, but it still has a lot of use uh, in a lot of different areas across the country. But there's actually a cheaper way, and it's a way that's going to transform how we access the internet. It's called 5G fixed wireless. Now, this uses the same basic premise as cable internet, only there's no wires at all, except for the one that runs from the receiver that you put on your house or apartment or building uh, to your router. That, that's basically it. You have the receiver, it picks up a signal from a main access point, basically like a cell tower, which uh, and the receiver then brings the signal into your home or business where you can route it to different devices. Now, the premise is the same, but there are differences between fixed wireless and things like DSL or cable internet. First off, fixed wireless doesn't use cables, as I said. So there's no heavy cost to lay miles and miles of cable for companies who do so. More importantly, those costs aren't passed on to you or me as the end user, which they kind of are now. There's no phone or cable service required for 5G fixed wireless, meaning you don't have to have a cable subscription, you don't have to have a, you know, a, a phone service or anything like that to have internet at your home or your office. And because there's no cables associated with 5G fixed wireless, it's easier to implement in more rural areas of the US that are struggled with high speed internet access. This has been the big uh, one of the big talking points in terms of the infrastructure deal passed by Congress is to really increase uh, wireless uh, broadband internet access to rural communities. Well, 5G wireless actually does that and does it much simpler. One of the biggest drawbacks, one of the biggest you know headaches for companies to try to get into more rural areas is the fact that it costs so much money to lay down cables. In this instance, we're using 5G fixed wireless. It doesn't cost that money at all. With 5G technology, uh, you you upload your upload and download speeds of a fig, of a 5G fixed wireless connection will be compatible uh, to that of cable based internet. Cable based is still slightly faster, but that's because we don't have a full rollout of 5G yet. Um, once that happens and the connectivity expands and the net expands, then you're going to see those connectivity speeds, upload and download speeds become much faster with 5G. Uh, there's no data caps with 5G either, uh, especially with fixed wireless internet. Sometimes cable or DSL companies will actually th will do what they call throttle you down uh, to uh, make your speeds much slower depending on traffic. Cell phone companies used to do this as well with LTE, 3G, 
2G technology, they used to throttle down because their networks would be so clogged with people trying to access the, 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 uh, the internet uh, that they wouldn't be able to provide the fast speeds for everyone. So they had to throttle people down. With 5G and fixed wireless, they don't really have to do that. So, and that's just a broad overview of the differences between the two. There's a lot more uh, pros and cons on, on both ends of the spectrum. But now something else related to 5G fixed wireless caught my eye while I was researching the topic. In 2020, there was virtually no uses of 5G fixed wireless technology anywhere. Basically, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic has put a sudden halt to the massive 5G implementation efforts by cell and internet companies. So there, you can't have 5G fixed wireless if you don't have 5G, and 5G was kind of sparsely out in 2020. However, a study by CounterPoint Research uh, released in September of 2021 found that 21% of all broadband technology will be rooted in 5G fixed wireless by 2030. It's the largest jump of any broadband technology, whether it's uh, cable, uh, DSL, fiber, uh, or no broadband access at all. 5G actually had the, has the largest jump from 2020 to 2030. And now one more thing adds fuel to this trend that I see here. During its reInvent conference this week, Amazon.com uh, announced it's developed a new service meant to make it easy for individuals and primarily businesses to deploy and manage their own 5G fixed wireless private network. Now, the new AWS private 5G is going to allow companies to set up and scale private mobile networks in a matter of days rather than a matter of months. It takes time because there's a lot of equipment involved to set up a 5G network. Amazon is making that very simple. This kind of network really changes the game for companies, especially those like manufacturers who are going to rely on the speed of 5G connectivity to drive smart factories. So you use like lots of robots and computer programming and uh, other uh, Internet of Things technology that smart factories use to become more efficient, to be faster and to produce things uh, much quicker. It also benefits any business that require that requires very low latency. And in this instance, you can think of a lag on a video game. You're moving fast, but your video is not your video game is not moving as fast. That's called latency uh, and the need to support uh, large numbers of devices like manufacturing facilities do. And companies like Ford and General Motors and Bosch are already looking into 5G fixed wireless technology in their factories across the world, uh, and especially here in the United States. Now, the question for you is, is how can you profit from this technology trend? Well, investing in Amazon.com would be fine, um, but you'd likely want a little bit more broad exposure to 5G technology, and Amazon isn't the only player in the game here. So to fully capitalize on the resurgence of the 5G revolution, I'd recommend the Defines 5G Next Gen Connectivity ETF. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker, very simple to remember, 5G, F-I-V-G, 5G. The exchange traded fund invests in stocks operating across 5G communications, and it holds companies like Advanced Micro Devices, Qualcomm, Verizon, Nokia, Ericsson, AT&T, T-Mobile. Uh, oh, and by the way, they actually do have a position in Amazon. Just, just to add, add fuel to it. Now, looking at the stock chart, 5G has seen a very strong upward uh, momentum swing since the corona crash of March 2020. Since that time, 5G has jumped an impressive 117%. It only paired back about 2% during the recent market pullbacks after the Thanksgiving holiday, uh, but it's less than 1% off its 52-week high and appears to be moving to that mark. Uh, in, the four, in, in the last four weeks, 5G is up 4.8% compared to the S&P 500, which is actually down 1%. So it's actually outperforming the broader market, even with the market pullback over the Thanksgiving holiday. 5G comes with a yield uh, of about 0.9%, not necessarily the greatest, but not bad either. And it equals to about an indicated uh, annual dividend of about 36 cents per share. Again, not the greatest, but any dividend is better than no dividend at all when you're looking at something like an ETF. So I, I think I think this 5G uh, this 5G ETF is one definitely to consider if you're looking for more exposure into 5G uh, as we move into 2022. More money being spent on infrastructure with uh, Congress's new bill being passed. Uh, I, I think this is a trend that you definitely want to capitalize on, and 5G uh, definitely does that. Again, it's F I V. G, 5G is the ETF. Now, let's look at last week's poll question just before the holiday weekend. We asked what your plans were for the Black, for Black Friday shopping. And a majority of you, 52%, said simply, bah humbug, meaning uh, you're probably not going to go out and do much Black Friday shopping. Another 33% of you said uh, that they're going to be doing holiday shopping online, while 13% said you're actually going to wait in line and uh, or actually wait for Small Business Saturday to shop. And just 2% of you said that you were going to be in the stores bright and early on Black Friday. 
to find the best deals. And we also asked what your best, per what your biggest purchases were going to be. And Pierrette Ray on YouTube said, I've determined that I'm better off sending homemade cookies to my friends and family rather than purchasing things and stuff they probably don't need or like. It's less costly and there's more satisfaction. Well, according to CNBC, Black Friday shopping in stores dropped 28% from their pre-pandemic levels. Shoppers appear more content uh, to spread their holiday shopping uh, over the course of the season rather than just try to do it in one day. Oh, and Pirate, by the way, if you do have any of those extra cookies, I would love to get my hands on some. Uh, just uh, just message me and I'll, I'll, I'll get you my contact information because I'm kidding, you don't have to do that. But if you do, that's fine. I, I would totally accept that. Um, now we do these polls on YouTube every week. So make sure you check back under our community tab on our YouTube homepage uh, and see what we're gonna ask next. If you do have a particular uh, question or a, a stock or sector, anything you'd like, Adam, Charles or myself to look at, email us. That email address is feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We'll drop that down below, feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. And we would love to uh, see, what, or you can comment on our YouTube channel as well under the video. Uh, and we would love to take a look at what you'd like us to look at. And if you do uh, have a question that you ask and we do use it, uh, then we are going to send you some cool Money Markets gear, kind of like this t-shirt that I have on here. We've got hats, sweatshirts, all sorts of cool stuff. All you got to do is submit a question to either feedback at moneymarkets.com or on our YouTube channel. And if we use it, you're going to get hooked up with some free Money Markets gear. Also head over to the mothership. It is moneymarkets.com. That is where everything is based out of. Sign up for our free daily e-letter and it we give you seven full days a week of safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information for your portfolio. Until next time, this is Money Markets Research Analyst and host of the Bull of the Bear, Matt Clark, wishing you all safe trading. <laughs>